Breslin Center on a Saturday morning in March. It is also unfamiliar territory for Climax Scotts. Shown arriving here. Neither team has ever won a state championship. Well, the Class D title is on the line as Climax Scotts will come north to battle Southfield Christian, who will come over, and they'll meet here in East Lansing at a championship tilt on Fox Sports Detroit. Good morning and welcome inside the Breslin Center. I'm John Keating with former Clarkston High School basketball star Tim McCormick. Well, this is an ungodly hour for teenagers on a Saturday morning, but nothing will get your heart going like the chance to win a title. Many game keys, John. Uh, first of all, the alarm clock. Are these players ready to go? They're not used to being up this early. Also, first year head coaches, both sides. First time ever in the bright lights of a state championship game, both teams. Very interesting first five minutes of this game. The Class D championship, much like Class C to follow, is one of size versus speed. Southfield Christian comes at you with some name recognition amidst their group and three very quick guards. Josh Baker, the coach, says this is the best trio of players in the Class D ranks. What you're looking at are guys that are prolific scored. Chris Dewberry, a killer mid-range game. They also get it done in transition, advancing the ball to outstanding Gavin. Score, and also off the defense, they get the steal here. That's Lindsey Hunter, the third, getting it done in transition. Those three combined for 61 points in the semifinal. For Southfield Christian, their style of play has been an evolution. Kind of frustrating as a first year coach because my philosophy has kind of changed a couple times. So we're not solid. But yeah, we, we think with our guards, more possessions is better. Unfortunately, our defense has not always done what it should be. And I think as guards and teams held the ball a lot on us earlier, we hated that. So then we had to change up our D. And so we're just, we're continuing to get better defensively. Pressure, speed up the game. More possessions is better for us. So great guard play from Southfield Christian. They'll have to be really good to counterbalance a huge disparity in size up front. Climax Scott comes at you with two big bodies. And if you like power basketball, you're gonna love these double, double standouts. Look at the size of Aaron Cook and Malachi Satterley. An offensive force is Cook cleaning up the missed shot in the perimeter. They focus on a high-low offense and Satterley does a really good job of finishing. These guys are triple threat big men. They score, rebound, and defend the paint. One of these schools will walk forward and accept the championship trophy later this morning to the absolute decibel raising, goosebump raising delight of those who follow them. It's Southfield Christian and Climax Scotts getting us going with the first of four championships to be decided. We'll tip it off next. The MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals are brought to you by Art Van Furniture, Michigan's number one furniture and mattress retailer. Becoming a champion requires many elements. It takes serious skill. It takes split-second decision-making. And it takes leadership. But all champions share one quality they have no control over. A dash of good luck. Today, on a campus synonymous with green, a champion will be crowned. And the teams that possess these championship qualities will find their pot of gold. The 2012 MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals begin now on Fox Sports Detroit. And now let's meet the starting lineup for this morning's game between the Panthers of Climax Scotts High School and the Eagles of Southfield Christian High School. For the Panthers at forward, 5'11 junior, 23, Kurt Gibson. For the Eagles at forward, 6'4", junior, 22, Frank Holacek. The other forward for Climax Scotts, 6'7", junior, 33, Aaron Cook. For Southfield Christian, at guard, 6'2", senior, number three, Chris Dewberry. 6'6", 
center for the Panthers, 6'7", junior, 32, Malachi Satterley. Guard for the Eagles, 6'2", senior, number 10, Gavin Toma. Guard for the Panthers, 5'7", senior, 3, Brandon S. Heiss. Guard for the Eagles, 5'11", sophomore, 11, Lindsey Hunter, the fourth. The other guard for Climas Cox, 6'2", senior, 4, Jacob Hinga. And for Southfield Christian, at guard, 6'1", senior, 12, Lindsey Hunter, the third. Head coach, Climax Scotts, Chief Critchlow. Head coach, Southfield Christian, Josh Baker. Officials today, Mark Barton, James Reed, and Bruce Moore. All in it at the table, Bruce Heater. Between the two of them, they have only lost three games all season long. Let's get the pregame comments from Southfield Christian head coach, Josh Baker, to his kids. All right, look, you all know that for 10 months, we have put in more time than anyone in the state. Five and six days of workouts, sprints with the bands, froggies, planks, plyos, jump machine, right? 7 a.m. daily 150s, six days a week. I've never had a team where everyone on the team has a ball in their box. That is another aspect of the story today. The two head coaches in their first year running their programs and all they did in their rookie campaigns was get their respective teams to the championship game here at the Breslin Center. Climax Scott's in the navy blue, Southfield Christian in the white, and the Panthers of Climax Scott's will have the first possession. Uh, inside out basketball for the Panthers. 6-7 and 6-7. They're going to force feed the ball and get their big guys fed early. Jacob Hinga regathers, gets the ball back inside. It goes to Cook from the free throw line. Aaron Cook's try is rebounded by Southfield Christian. And out of it will come Lindsey Hunter, the fourth, to Lindsey Hunter, the third. That's right, number 11 and number 12 are stepbrothers, Lindsey Hunter and Lindsey Hunter. And there is Steve Critchlow of Climax Scots. Brendan Ansheis, the point guard for the Panthers. Fight up and no. And out of it will come Gavin Toma. Head to Chris Dubell against Satterley. And the Eagles will keep it. A good sign for Southfield Christian. This Climax Scots team pounds people on the glass so far, doing a nice job on the offense and defensive end. Hunter took a, an extra step before he began. And there is Josh Baker, first year head coach of Southfield Christian's Eagles. Uh, really impressed with what they do offensively. A tough cover team because they spread the court with their shooting and just destroy teams to the rim with penetration. The Eagles with constant pressure defensively. Saturday, this try off the front iron, no. And out of bounds, and the Panthers will keep it. Southfield Christian 23-2. Climax Scott's 26-1. Each team finished in the top 10 in Class D in the state of Michigan. S Heights looking to create a little space. Kirk Gibson has it go off his leg, out of bounds to the Eagles of Southfield Christian. John, that's a familiar name. Lindsey Hunter, Kirk Gibson. Kirk Gibson. Yeah, we're, we're loaded with former Detroit legends. Kirk Gibson not related to the former Tiger great, but says he was named for the former Tiger great and wears his number proudly, number 23. Traveled at the opposite end of the floor. And so Gibson's Panthers will take back over. 
Uh, as I watch coaches Critchlow and Baker work the sidelines, talk to their kids, I really enjoy watching well-coached teams. And John, what they do makes sense for the Panthers. They've got great size and being able to go inside, everything they do is to exploit their size advantage. And on the opposite end, Southfield Christian wants to play as fast as they can. They've got really good pressure defense. Well, there's more pressure defense there, and that forces a turnover, and the Eagles will take back over. Just underway, we're scoreless. Two minutes into the Class D championship game. John Kidding with Tim McCormick, our producer Chris Wozniowski, director Pat Collar, and we're thrilled you're along with us on a Saturday morning in March at the Breslin Center. A four guard spread offense. They all dribble, pass, and shoot so well. Hunter for three. Got it. That is known as Big. Big Lynn is the elder of the two Lindsay Hunters. Essex pushing the pace. Gibson on a wing. That's too strong. And the Eagles will force a held ball. And they will get it back on the alternate possession. One of the best shooters in Class D basketball, or any basketball at the high school level, Chris Dewberry. Uh, I, I heard the, the student section singing a special song, song to him right before the tip, John. Happy birthday to Chris Dewberry and his classmates. Southfield Christian serenading him during warm-ups here at the Breslin Center. 18 years old is Chris Dewberry, and we know what he wants for his birthday, a state championship. Try inside, and out of bounds, and the Eagles will keep it. That's Bakari Evelyn who has entered the game, just a freshman, number 15. And he'll inbounds for Southfield Christian. Defensively, Climax Scott, confrontational defense, really good ball pressure, strong majority of man-to-man -man defense. Biglin kicks it out, Evelyn for three. That won't go. Foul inside, and over the back was an eagle. And to take a look at the road to the final, the path that each team took to get here. Southfield Christian getting past Saginaw Lutheran Seminary and Muskegon Catholic Central. That's Heiss against Evelyn. Gibson will swing it. Jacob Hinga got it. And now there's some Shots that are warming up a little bit. Tied at three early. Dewberry for three. Splash! As Ice is fouled at center court. And the foul is on Evelyn. His first. Beautiful arc on the delivery. Couple of really good shooters both way. Chris Dewberry is the best shooter that Coach Baker has ever been around for Southfield Christian. Yes, Heiss to Gibson. Aaron Cook will swing it out top. Another foul on Evelyn, his second. And this freshman is a big part of what Southfield Christian and Josh Baker like to get done. He is absolutely fearless as a freshman. Josh Baker has a lot of help, and there's Lindsey Hunters everywhere. There's two of them on the court, and a two-time NBA champion with the Pistons and the Los Angeles Lakers. Lindsey Hunter is doing a great job helping out with Southfield Christian's guard attack. Josh Baker says that he and Lindsey agree on almost everything. You think it might be a little overwhelming to have an NBA great on your bench, but. They are on the same page. An extra step or two or three. And back it'll go to Climax Scott. And Lindsay's fired up. He's well, always fired up. Well, Lindsay also knows about post defense. Watch the collapse defensively. Malachi gets up. There's four guys surrounding him. Outstanding sagging defense. Great battle inside between Frank Holacek and Malachi Satterley. Inside goes S. Heiss. And off Satterley's hands. Malachi will get it back. He'll put it up. Yes! Back on the Eagles. Dewberry for three. Over Cook. 
is fouled as he let it go, and he'll shoot three times. Aaron Cook with a terrific wingspan at 6'7". He's got more outside game than does his teammate Malachi Satterley. But uh, caught some of Dewberry's arm there, and so Chris will shoot three. Who is that masked man? Well, it's, it's Chris Dewberry, and his shooting is prolific. Huge game in the semis, and John, I had a chance to watch Chris play ever since he was in seventh grade at Abbott Middle School in West Bloomfield. And, and at that point, he was about the same size as he is now, always a good shooter. But I've seen a kid that's clearly worked on his game because he can defend. The jump shot is good. He has changed his game from post to perimeter. And, and I think he is going to be a tremendous shooter for somebody at the college level. Yeah, we're seeing signs of that at the free throw line right now. He wears that mask because obviously he's had a, a broken nose. And much like Rip Hamilton, once you've had your nose broken, you pretty much wear your mask all the time and you just have to live with it. You don't want it again, I yeah. promise you that. Bingo bango, says Chris Dewberry. And we're headed to break. Our first chance to breathe in the Class D championship game, but this one has had some influence from the length of Okemos early on at the Breslin Center. Well, we showed you the road to the finals just a few moments ago. Let's take you airborne and show you how Climax Scott found their way to the Breslin Center as we take you up and back down. They've got about a little more than 300 kids in their school. It's about halfway between Kalamazoo and Battle Creek. And Big Box Tops is a reference to the fact that Panther Pride Club raised $1,800 during the last school year through a box top label program. Well, I've never I've never bungee jumped, but that kind of gives me a perspective going up and down like that, John. And I, I, I look at Coach Critchlow and, and just feel like this is a very strong building program. They have now won seven district championships in a row, and really the only state championship success they've had, they won a football state championship in 2004. All right, he's serious now. He just took his coat off. So Steve Critchlow, who... He's elevated from the junior varsity and assistant head coach to the varsity coach for this school year. Has great timing. He has his team playing for the Class D championship. S. Huts. Gibson. Back to Brandon baseline. Skip pass. Hango looking for help. That's Satterley way out top. Here comes the clamping defense from. The Eagles of Southfield Christian. Hangel will take it inside. That shot is too strong, and Park comes away with it. Lindsay to the basket. In and out. Whistle. And out of bounds to Climax Scott. Really no deception at all in what Southfield Christian wants to do. Josh Baker went down and watched a Hubie Brown practice in Memphis and stole a lot of his good ideas on how to facilitate a fast break, a very good idea. Eagles collapsing on Satterley inside. Ben Ferry has entered the game. Chris Dewberry looking to push the pace. Out top, Big Lynn, Little Lynn, got it! And a fist pump from Little Lynn. The sophomore. I thought brothers aren't supposed to share. <laughs> it's important to do it at this level. Saturday. Off the back iron, off the top of the backboard. Hinga has it put right back in his face and saved from 100 to the next. There's more sharing for you. David Johnson has entered the game. It'll go off his hands and out of bounds. And Climax Scott will get the basketball back. Looking to carve into a six-point deficit early. Yeah, what a great save. And my favorite moment is watching Lindsey Hunter jumping up and down on the bench, high-fiving his teammates. There is really nobody in the game of basketball more enthusiastic and passionate than Lindsey Hunter. Jack Novosny has the basketball taken away from him. Another held ball, and the Panthers of Climax Scott will keep it. 
Just into the game, trying to make something happen. Zach Novosny. We wondered if the players would be ready to go with such an early start time, 10 a.m. High school boys not usually up this early, and the energy has been off the charts for both teams. And watching Southfield Christian in a semifinal game, Little Lynn, Lindsey Hunter the fourth, well he is he gets after it defensively. He plays a very physical style that we're thinking he picked up from from his dad because it's got some some NBA attached to it. Hinga on a wing. Gibson goes inside. Hook shot. Offensive foul. We'll take the points off the board. That's the first on Malachi Satterley. Yeah, beautiful post entry. Don't agree with the call. Thought like he fell down. And Climax Scotts is very balanced. Gibson, Cook, and Satterley each had 12 in their eight point semifinal win. Hunter will spin and take it. Rebound to Hinga. Here comes the Bosni. Past a couple of Eagles. Baseline. Saturday's shot won't go. Rebounded inside. Back out. Blocked. Chris Dewberry. Fouled before the shot. And so the Eagles will take it out of bounds. You might say that Southfield Christian relies heavily on their offense. Not necessarily true. They score a ton of points off of their defense. And if you look at the numbers, John, six times this year, nine, 90 points or above, six times. And if you look at the other side, Climax Scotts has only scored 81 points. So this has to be a battle of tempo. Holacek, who had the block, will take a seat. And Hutter drains an NBA three. Big win with a three. Now Climax Scotts has to uh, make sure that they're sort of hanging around. Cook's try won't go. And they'll keep it. Shot inside. Gibson. Off balance jumper. Rebounded to Dewberry. Looking to add to a nine point lead of the Eagles. Big Lynn for three. Way long. Tapped out of bounds, and Southfield Christian will keep it. Well, probably not the shot that Southfield Christian was looking for. That was a one shot opportunity to end the first quarter. Luckily for them, they get the ball out of bounds. Lindsay the third takes a seat. David Johnson comes in. It's Dewberry inside. Off the glass and in. And we have reached the end of the first quarter. What a quarter it was for Southfield Christian. The Eagles with a 16-5 lead on the Panthers of Climax Scotts at the Breslin Center in the first of four championships to be decided on this Saturday in March and here on Fox Sports Detroit. Welcome back, back to the Class D State Finals. Right now, Southfield Christian up over Climax. Scott here in the, going into the second now. Uh, Southfield Christian's slogan this year is find a way. It's right here on the back of their warm-up jerseys. And Josh Baker, their head coach, told me that's something he's been living by for a number of years now. He actually learned it from one of his high school teachers. He himself is a teacher, so he uses it in his classroom. It's kind of been motivation for the guys. If you go through a tough practice, a tough game, find a way. Find that way to the basket. Find that way to the win. Guys, I'll send it back to you. All right, Shannon, thank you. Shannon Hogan, we welcome her to the uh, broadcast. She'll be a part of all four of the games, as will Tim McCormick. Dan Gatowski taking over in this chair as your Saturday continues a little bit later on on Fox Sports Detroit. Four games. He'll do a pancake breakfast. His dad and him now still do the pancake breakfast. He says he owes the guys like three or four. They're just rolling it over to next year because they've had such a great season. And I, I'm sure even after tonight, they're going to have another pancake breakfast coming. Guys, we'll send it back to you. All right, Shannon, thank you. Climax Scott's trying to 
Got to take in the moment, I think. Bask in it a little bit. Play some basketball and have some fun. After listening to Shannon's story, I'm, I'm getting I'm hungry, John. <laughs> and there is Kurt Gibson. We're with us at the, at the top of the show. We mentioned that he claims he was mentioned for the or named for the former Tiger outfielder. Lefty. Wears his number proudly. Absolutely. Wonder how the hamstrings are. <laughs> Is it funny that all the work that Kirk Gibson has done, I always remember his hurt hamstring yeah, in the home run. Right. Well, that is accurate. He probably had great hamstrings his whole career. I don't remember that. I, I have a philosophy in basketball, whether it's high school, college, NBA, if you make 10 or more three-pointers, you win the game. And Southfield Christian has 10 at the end of the third quarter. Wow. What, what an uh, exhibition they put on from deep. And they don't look like they're backing off much either. Hinga, three ball. Got it. Jake Hinga hits a three. Here comes some full court pressure. Toma just shrugs it aside. Right, this is really the best part of the Southfield Christian offense is that they put the ball in a playmaker's hands. I don't know which one. They've yeah, got four guys yeah, that do it issue. so well. Right. And they put exceptional shooters in the corners. I don't know which ones because they all shoot. They've got four high-level scorers, ball handlers, distributors. They do it all. An extremely tough cover as a team. Got a glimpse of Lindsey Hutter, the fourth, taking off his very, very blue sneakers. Getting some attention on what looks to be an ankle. Panthers with a basketball. Baseline. Got it. But one thing I've noticed about Climax Scott, it seems like when they knock down shots, they defend better. They, they seem really really more energized and it happens a lot of times when you make a bucket you get a little bounce in your step you start feeling a little swagger out there and that was a pretty nice run by climax it was nine nothing that's where you see guys slap the floor and say come on right after they make a, a bucket defensively they're looking for the next challenge toma big lindsey pops in got it Sabazi will pull it out. And the Eagles are not letting up. Here comes Toma. Looking for a mate. Double teamed and is fouled by Nabosni. And we've talked so much about Chris Dewberry because he's got 22 and, and the Hunters have been really good, but you just can't dismiss Gavin Toma and all the stuff he does. 13 points, so you know he's knocking down shots. Four rebounds, three assists. And maybe sometimes the guy that doesn't make the athletic plays, the home run type plays, gets overshadowed. That's not the case with Toma. Out of bounds, back to Southfield Christian. I find it interesting that the two big guys, um, Climax Scott, are both on the bench, Satterley and Cook. A pretty nice crowd here for early in the morning. Filling right up. Class C championship game to come. You know, student sections are, are so fantastic. Did they have student sections back when you were playing? Dewberry hits. Yeah, we did. We did have them from a, a Class B school. Just barely over and back. But to Bishop Foley, played, played a little basketball, and we did not have much team success. Shocking. I couldn't shoot, but I couldn't jump well either. <laughs> and not much defense. I was consistent. I had some, I had some defense to my game. Toma. Into the paint. Running one-hander won't go. And the Eagles will keep it. Well, what a shooting exhibition we've seen from Southfield Christian. One 
three away from a finals record. And there's still 542 to go. I think that record might get blown away in this contest. I like their chances. Maybe right here. Yes. Dewberry just tied it. Right on cue. He heard us talking. Hinga for three. Front iron, no. Esheis for three. Got it. Brandon Esheis hits. Down court. Back on the Panthers. Hinga backs up to take a three ball. And Hinka can't save it out of bounds. His range is incredible. I think that he got fouled on the play, a hand on the elbow. They run for threes. Bakari Evelyn, coast to coast. Rebound to Holacek. No. Dubera is fouled. We want to welcome everybody to the Breslin Center and the Chris Dewberry Show. On his 18th birthday, the student section sang a rendition of Happy Birthday to Chris before the game. And it wasn't bad. That way they sounded really it wasn't bad. bad. You had a chance to, to chat with him. And what's the best part of your day, you said? Well, he announced to us, it's my birthday. Yeah, I've known Chris for a long time, and you can you can look at a kid like this and say, oh, he's blessed with skill. Yeah, he's got some skill, but, John, he's a worker to the highest level. He wears out basketballs in the summer. And his coach, Josh Baker, sitting with Lindsey Hunter, former Piston, former Laker NBA champion, said at Romulus where he was an assistant coach, was surrounded by some really good players, Ronald Coleman and Jared Smith, who went on to Michigan, Will Clyburn at Iowa State. Over his years there, 36 players from Romulus went on to full rise. He said that Chris Dewberry is by far the best shooter he's ever been around. And while Chris Dewberry has great basketball skills, he aspires to be a pediatrician. I think he'll be the best shooting pediatrician <laughs> in the history of the field. He can make diagnoses from way outside the waiting room. Four and a half to play in the Class D championship game, an outcome that has been decided for a while, but Climax Scott's looking to finish strong. Gibson's try for the three ball won't go. There's Big Lindsay. Lindsay the third. Toma into traffic. Stolen away by Esheis. Zach Nabosny pops. Try for a three. Won't go. Gibson. Hinga. Short. Well, they're getting looks. They're getting chances. They just can't get shots to fall. And Lindsey Hunter, or Evelyn, check that. Couldn't get that one to go either. The Bosnia will kick it out. Yeah, if you're tuning in late and if you're wondering why Malachi Satterl and Aaron Cook are not in the game, the two six seven stars for Climax Scott's, the reason's simple. They weren't able to get the ball and score in size, inside, and their size was a detriment trying to deal with the three-point shooting of Southfield Christian. Chris Dewberry leading Southfield Christian in the direction of a Class D championship. It would be the Eagles' first in school history. This year has been incredible. Uh, my other years here have been pretty bad because I've suffered injuries my sophomore year and junior year. And then this year we had Dewberry transfer last year, Big Lynn. And so I knew that this year would be really special and that we could really do work. And work they have done, led by his running mates, Chris Dewberry and Lindsey Hunter the third. 
And that triad has been a big part of Southfield Christian rolling over Climax Scotts in the Class D Championship game today. 12 out of 25. Maybe the best three-point shooting performance we've ever seen in the finals. They've tied the record, and they have shot better from three than they have from two. Yeah, pretty incredible when you look at their numbers. They've got 12 triples. Wow. And we'll keep track of this for the final three and a half minutes. Whether Southfield Christian can set a state record for the most threes in state history in a championship game. Here comes Dewberry. Big Lindsay. Lindsay the third. With five subs at the scorer's table, you can say goodbye with the championship to, to three amazing seniors that have driven their team to a state championship. The first double in Southfield Christian High School history. And they'll receive the accolades from the student section and their classmates. What a performance. You know, I, Steve Critchlow is going to walk away from this contest and he's going to be evaluating what he could have done better, what drills his team could have done to prepare for this. I, I want to tell the coach that he has done a remarkable job with his team and to put it simply Southfield Christian has a higher level of offensive player that's as simple as I can put it they've got four guys on the court at all time that can knock down threes dribble pass get to the room complete offensive players both of these teams have done a tremendous job of maximizing their performance so a big hug from Lindsey Hunter the second to Lindsey Hunter the third dad the son on the Eagles bench. Keep in mind that Climax Scots will have their two big guys back next year to make another run. Satterley and Cook both back for another season. Very well said and, and this is the, the game. They will watch this tape and they will start forward thinking about what do we need to do better next summer to start prepping to to work a little bit more on our post entry to be able to finish a little bit stronger, to contest the three-point line more aggressively. Those are lessons that can power them to get back here next year. And as you begin the process of building a program, remember that it's only the first time that Climax Scotts has played for a championship game. These practices and these experiences, these are building blocks, aren't they? And remember, this is the first time that either one of these coaches has ever been a high school coach. They're both first year. Alex Saltzman has entered the game for the Panthers. Jeremy Lantis in for Climax Scots as well. Along with Hinga. And Ferry still out there. And Brandon Esheitz, who has the basketball now. Two and a half to play. These are some guys off the bench who probably never thought that they would be needed in a state championship game. Hoping that it was going to go better for the starters than it has. And an extra step taken there by Cameron Garner. The broadcast of this game is a copyrighted presentation of the Michigan High School Athletic Association and Fox Sports Detroit. No reproduction, retransmission, or other distribution of the images, descriptions, or accounts of this game may take place without express written consent. We're with you all day, the Class C Championship to come on Fox Sports Detroit. Lantis. As Heiss. Brandon will try it off the back iron. There's a three ball. Foul inside. Eagles foul. And the foul is on Southfield Christian, so free throws will be the result. The next edition of the MHSAA Super Show presents highlights from state finals competition and many of the other sports which crown champions during the winter season. 
Enjoy a look at the tremendous team and individual accomplishments on the MHSAA Winter Super Show, premiering Saturday, April 7th at 7 on Fox Sports Detroit. Ben Ferry with one of two. Rebounded by Hinga. Jake is done playing. Travel called on Christian Bankston, who has entered the game for the Eagles. Many times the fans focus so hard on the starters, but it's easy to ignore the fact that the reason the starters are so proficient and strong is that they get a good run in practice every day. I would imagine there, there are some games that both of these teams overpower their opponent and realize their best competition that week was in practice on the practice court. Yeah. And again, that's all part of building a, building a program. More subs coming into the game. Brandon Ensheis, the senior starting point guard, as his day ended. Weston Williams in. Garrett Bartholomew. Cody Moody will try a three. And here come the Eagles. Rebound, up and in. No. And it's not pretty at game's end. When the game is as lopsided as this one is. And this is interesting. Climax Scott's putting some of their more regulars in. Lindsey Hunter of Pistons fame. When he's in town, works with the guards, a very active assistant coach. And also, at 7.30 every morning, he meets with his players, and they shoot 100 threes and 50 free throws. And you can see by the fact that they have tied a state finals record with 12 in this contest. 36 points beyond the arc is just a, a fantastic feat. You know that he's taught them some defense, too, because that was always the best thing that Lindsey Hunter did in the Piston uniform. It's great to see him still around in the community and obviously involved in his kids' lives. And he's a big part of the dramatic turnabout in the basketball fortunes at Southfield Christian. Along with Josh Baker, they were 1-19 two years ago, and now they're going to win a state championship. Southfield Christian has scored over 90 points in a game six times. Very good friends with Nate Oates, the, the, the coach at Romulus. They play together at Moran, Moranpa Baptist in Wisconsin, and they talked about their dream of one day being a coach and winning a high school state championship. Barry can't get it. And Ben will shoot a couple of free throws. There's Josh Baker. Ben Ferry came over from Germany and also played football. Not just a, a basketball experience. Said his best moment of his high school career was winning a dance-off <laughs> amidst classmates and teammates. He's cooking him. Floater. Rebound inside. Up and in, no. Cookenham comes out of the mess with the basketball. Three ball. And a foul. And will shoot three free throws. And by we, I mean Perry Bender will shoot three free throws. Six foot sophomore. Also a baseball player is Perry. Wants to be a professional in that regard. The biggest story in this game from my standpoint is the threes. That's obvious, but the secondary is that in the semis against Muskegon Catholic Central, Jason Rebecki had 37, and the Eagles were just too small to deal with him, especially on the glass. 
In this contest, not the case. Southfield Christian did an exemplary job of boxing out and getting four to five players rebounding in the paint. Big smiles on the Eagles bench. Bender hits two of three. Final ticks in what has been a rather lopsided Class D championship game. Battling to the bitter end. Cookingham plays close to the floor, if you know what I'm saying. Hinga at the buzzer. Got it. Southfield Christian, your Class D chance. Kind of knew how this one was going to go in the early going. The Southfield Christian began to establish dominance and just kept it up for the entirety of the Class D title game. Prolific. The best three-point shooting that we have seen. 12 triples, 36 behind the arc. What an offensive juggernaut Southfield Christian is, led by Chris Dewberry. They never trailed in the game, and they ended up winning it big. And they're about to get the bigger of the big wooden mittens to take home with them to Southfield. We'll continue in a moment from the Fresen Center and here on Fox Sports Detroit. The MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals are brought to you by Art Fan Furniture, Michigan's number one furniture and mattress retailer. Welcome back to the party that is the Breslin Center, at least at one end of the Breslin Center, as Southfield Christian finishes a basketball year in which they went 24-2. and two. And their 24th win was big, and their three seniors led them to it. Coach Josh Baker said that his trio is the best threesome in Class D basketball. They had 61 in the semis, put on a show here in the finals. Congratulations. Chris Dewberry, the birthday young man, had a 30-point day, along with Lindsey Hutter III and Gavin Toma. They led Southfield Christian to a big lead early and a big win late. And what is it's 76 to 44, their first ever state championship in basketball. For Tim McCormick and Shannon Hogan, I'm John Keating with our final score in the Class D title game. Southfield Christian 76, Climax Scots 44. You've been watching the MHSAA basketball finals on Fox Sports Detroit. So long from the Breslin Center in East Lansing. guard Lola but they aren't the only set of sisters on the team number 22 and 23 are the Evangelista sisters Andriana and Leah they're sisters they know each other front and back they can say stuff to uh, somebody else that I can't because they know each other and they take it a little bit better so it's just that chemistry that they have as being sisters they uh, and the Evangelistas they're all friends so it, you got that bond which is uh, hard to form with just other teams with, with girls who don't know each other. Thick as thieves, the girls practically have their own language out on the court. All five of us, we're just really close and we call each other sisters. We have handshakes. Of, yeah. Secret handshakes. Yeah. And like, yeah. Can I see a handshake? Oh, me and Haley's is we like... We don't have one. We go we like this, one, and when she wants pics, I just, she just chucks this up. We're like, I love you, and so And so when she does this, I set a pick for her. She shoots a three. We know pretty much what, she, what each other's going to do. Like, I know Madison's favorite move on the court and all that stuff. And I know Lola loves to do the runner. Led by Miss Basketball, Madison Rostovsky, who has scored more than 2,300 points in her high school career, Liggett has established their team as one of the best in the state. They made it all the way to the Class C state finals last year, but came up short. It really broke our hearts. And after the game was over, I remember everyone being so upset. 
and Bree, one of the girls on my team, says, you know, what are you guys so upset about? And I was like, we just lost the state championship game. She turns to me and she said, we'll be back next year. Madison believes the team was missing a key piece to the puzzle last year. Yep, another Ristovsky. On Tuesday, we actually said that she was our missing key. You know, Lola adds so much to the flow of our transition and she really fits in nicely. With the family complete on the court this season, the girls continue to grow as athletes, teammates, and of course, sisters, keeping practice heated and spending countless hours in the gym. There's a lot of competitiveness. Um, we, in practice, we always try and go against each other just to work ourselves harder because we play the hardest and the best against one another. Their goal this season, to win a state title. But this year was about more than winning. It was a special chance to share their love for the sport all of the sisters on the same team for the last time. Basketball is the bond between our family. So I mean, every weekend we were in the gym together. It's how, you know, we got along and we, that was our family function, if you could say, you know, we used to kill each other in the gym and we would probably leave crying because we were so competitive. But you know, at the end of the day, we were just looking forward to, you know, that one year in high school to play together. Madison Rosowski put up a great show here at Breslin last weekend. 42 points. Unfortunately for them, Liggett did lose to Morley Stanwood 61 to 57. So a little disappointing for them, but all the sisters playing together. And Madison Rosowski will be going to the University of Michigan to play next year. So I'm sure we're not done seeing great things for her. Don't go away. We're going to come back to Breslin in just a little bit. 44 18 here going into the second half. Southfield Christian over Climax Scott right now. We'll be back. Back at the Breslin Center, we think Climax Scott's coach, Steve Critchlow, went back to the drawing board at halftime. He's standing by alongside our Shannon Hogan. Shannon? Coach, what do you guys need to do to address their perimeter shooting? They've got some guys that are really hot today. Yeah, they're very hot. You know, these guys worked on their shot, obviously. Uh, smooth shooters, and we're trying to stay close, and we're not close enough. Um, I think they're 8 for 15 at halftime. That's a pretty good three-point percentage. And we just played one of the best perimeter shooting teams. So it's kind of a bummer in the locker room. So we got to find, we got to dig deep a little bit and find a way to stay closer, mixing some matchups and things like that. All right, good luck with the second half, Coach. Thanks so much. Yep. Guys, I'll send it back to you. All right, Shannon, thanks. Let's look at some numbers. And uh, the head coach mentioned it, 8 for 15 from beyond the arc for Southfield Christian in that first half, and that's a big part of the big disparity on the scoreboard. Southfield Christian with eight threes, Climax with only six total baskets, and in the first half, the thing that really surprised me the most is plus eight on the boards for Southfield Christian. Remember, they are a small team. They are relying on gang rebounding, which has been very impressive. And also, you know, one of the, the key strengths for Climax Scots is that Satterley and Cook are double-double machines. They're only two for 12 from the field. They have to get some more production offensively. Yeah, so sort of the problem for Climax Scots is that there haven't been enough rebounds available because they're taking the ball out of the basket more than they'd care to because of how well the Eagles of Josh Baker have shot it in the first half. Chris Dewberry, three out of four beyond the arc. He had 15 points, an amazing performance, 48% from the team. And at the end of the first half, there's Lindsey Hunter the third, making it look easy. And the celebration's already starting. I would think that, that if I'm Lindsey Hunter the third, I make a copy of that shot right at the end of halftime and I just put it on a loop and I watch it on my computer <laughs> over and over again because that had to be as much fun as you could have on a basketball court. End the half, make an exclamation point, put your team up really, really big at halftime of the Class D championship game. Okay, but you know, sometimes we've been saying all kinds of nice things. After that shot by Lindsey Hunter, he actually ran into the wrong tunnel. <laughs> so, so it wasn't a flawless first half for him. <laughs> See, that's, that's why Tim McCormick is here, to, when you feel good about yourself, to bring you back to earth just a, just a little bit. But it's all about team for the Eagles, and their team is up big. 44-18 as we get set to begin the third quarter here at the Breslin Center. The Class C game to follow, which matches Flint, Flint Beecher against Traverse City St. Francis. And we're looking forward to that matchup as well as the A and the B games Still to come from the Breslin Center on one of our favorite days of the year. Good news for Climax Scotts. They'll get the ball first. 
They'll need to start hitting some threes. Well, the challenge is that Southfield Christian on the season averages 22 points a game beyond the arc. They already have 24. Enga for three. There you go. That's a nice little start. Yeah, but did you see what they did? They started the offense going inside, and that is how they got the open shot on the perimeter. Big Lindsay to Holacek. Toma. Big Lindsay again. Stops, pops, hits. Where he left off in the first half, he has picked up in the second. Brandon Esheis inside to Cook. He'll turn and hit. It's a more relaxed looking Panthers group to come out of the locker room. They, they just have a big hole to fill. Toma blocked by Cook. Jacob Hinga pushing the pace. Off the hands of Chris Dewberry, out of bounds to the Panthers. Without trying to make mistakes in the open, we did talk about the alarm clock being a factor, and sometimes teams aren't used to playing games at an early time. I really think that, that in the first half, Climax Scotts did not bring it in the first 10 minutes of this contest. Their plan was to leave the school at 7-10 this morning to make their way to East Lansing for this championship game. Little Lindsay to Toma. Dewberry will take it. And hit. They don't have much fear about launching shots to the Eagles. Saturday blocked. Held ball. And it will go over to the Eagles. Why don't they have much fear? Well, there's two things. Their coach gives them a lot of confidence because they know they're darn good shooters and it's probably going in. When you make them all, it's a pretty good option, isn't it? Stolen away by the Panthers. As Heiss against Hutter. Cook for three. In and out. Saturday rebounds. Back up strong. Got it and one. Offensive rebounding has to be an advantage in the second half for Climax Scotts and Malachi Satterley, you can tell this kid is a worker, about 15 foot range, can break down off the dribble, first team All-Stater, has the goal of playing college basketball. I can see him fulfilling his dream. Malachi converts the three-point play. The lead cut to 23. Toma, front court, Hunter for three. Off the front iron, no. Brandon S. Heinz. Cook. Nice job of rebounding inside by Hunter. Dewberry. What do you know? One didn't go their way. But they save the ball off of a Panther out of bounds, and the Eagles will keep it. Now, most kids practice three-pointers with their feet set, taking a breath. This is a very difficult shot when you're sprinting 94 feet and you're catching off balance. Oh, and they just missed a wide-open layup inside. Hunter's trying no. Rebound is saved to Hinga. Harding Fears has entered the game. Along with Bakari Evelyn. Toma through traffic. Evelyn fouled on his way to the basket. You're noticing as this game proceeds that a lot of teams, when they're in transition, they run for layups. Not so for the Eagles. They run to get threes. You've seen a number of times where Chris Dewberry sprints right to that corner, and he knows that Gavin Toma is excellent at delivering. The Bosnia in, Gibson is in. Malachi Satterley will take a seat. Dewberry up top against Hinga. Toma for three. 
Rebound to Hinga. That's nice. Offensive foul. Brandon was determined. I think he took some frustration out there. He was going to make something happen. Ran right through a wall. What I love about this is Chris Dewberry is an elite scorer, one of the best scorers in Oakland County. You don't see many guys that are deep shooters that'll give up their body like that. Especially in a game that is this one-sided. Toma kicks it back. Able to took an extra hop. And Josh Baker still coaching him up. Halfway through the third quarter. Offensively, the Panthers have a pretty interesting offense. They've got three really good guards and three forwards, all very good passers. But I do think their best ball is going inside. Barry has it taken away. Dewberry weaving his way through traffic. Got it. Happy birthday, Chris Dewberry. He might be having the best birthday in birthday history. <laughs> Rebound Hinga. Can't get the roll. Barry comes away with it, but it's off of his hands. And Hunter dribbles out of trouble. Kicks it to Toma. Checks his feet. Hits a three. Sometimes you can break down scouting reports and look at statistics. And you come away with the realization that one team is better than the other. They've got better shooters, they're quicker, they rebound well. That is the case in this game. Southfield Christian is a better basketball team, and that shouldn't be a knock on what's been an amazing season for Climax Scott. And the key thing is, there is still so much time in this contest that what you have to do is elevate your effort on the defensive end. Focus on the fundamentals. Make your free throws, contest shots, crash the boards that's the way that you try to end this game on a positive note and get back in contention you may not win the game but win the half yes. win the quarter you know win some win some respect back win a good feeling as you as you get on the bus well, climax scott has had a tremendous season they've earned respect for the way they compete and i would expect that we've seen a much better start to this second half than we did the first half Kirk Gibson makes one of two. Fears with the rebound. And here come the Eagles looking for more. Evelyn. Johnson. Fouled. And he'll shoot two. Climax Scott beat Carney Nato from the Upper Peninsula. 52-44 in the semifinals. Behind 12 points each from Malachi Satterley and Aaron Cook and Kirk Gibson. Gets two. Yeah, very nice job in that contest. Defensively, they held Carney Nadu to 29% from the field and only 44 points. Defense definitely wins. But their defense has been no match for the offense of Southfield Christian today. Johnson hits both. 56-27 now. As we play in the third quarter of the Class D Championship game. The party begins to become on for the Eagles in East Lansing. Southfield Christian, it would seem, on their way to their 14th consecutive win, and if they pull it off, they will win their first ever state class D championship. And let's take you to where they live from the Breslin Center. So Southfield, founded in 1970, is the school representing 40 cities and 100 different churches from metropolitan Detroit. And every family, regardless of whether you're an athlete or just a student, you have to buy in. 20 hours of volunteer time is required every school year from all families. And among their most noteworthy alums, the former Red Wing defenseman Brian Rafalski, who might be watching in Florida and rooting on his alma mater today. Kindergarten through 12th grade, and the Hunters and the Tomas, they've been together for a long time. The kids are very close, and what happens is that when you have such a small community, everybody is so close, you develop those friendships. Everybody knows someone when you're playing in a Class D environment. 
Most of the kids play all of the sports. And the school becomes your family. And the families of your family. Same for Climax Scott. Malachi Satterley looking for room. An extra step was taken by Zach Nabosny. Turnover. Back come the Eagles. A little full court pressure. You would think that that would be a mistake because of the speed of Southfield Christian, but you want to try to take them out of their comfort zone. When they run their half court offense, they've been excellent. The team with so much poise, however, they're, at least from what we've seen, the semis and to today, they're not really bothered by the pressure. Saturday rebounds to Cook. And Malachi throws it away. The 15th turnover. And that is fuel for transition. If you allow a team like Southfield Christian to get extra possession, it's no surprise why Climax Scott is in a danger zone. Reinforcements entering the game for Climax Scott. Alex Lotus comes in. And he'll pick up Aaron Cook. Climax Scott's, yes, it's their first attempt at a basketball championship. The team won the, uh, the school won the state division eight championship in football in 2004. Also, their assistant coach, Tyler Lang, was quarterback and running back on that team. There is some history. Fears takes it strong to the basket and gets the hoop. And Ferry. Here come the Eagles. Able to behind his back. Cutter got it. Nice dish. Finger roll. And that might be uh, piling on. Timeout. 30 second timeout. Called by Climax Scott. A bit of a half smile from Steve Critchlow. Oh, what a delivery of the ball. It couldn't have been any better. Yeah, this, is, uh, this, this is an example of kids that have played together for a long time, and you can look at the smile on their face. They know they're really good, and if you're looking back at, at maybe a time that was the turning point in their season, Southfield Christian was smoked and destroyed earlier this year. They gave up 107 points to Country Day, who's a Class B powerhouse. And it was at that time that, that their coaching staff was able to send the message, look, you, you guys are definitely good, but you're capable of so much more. And look at the stat line of Lindsey Hunter three. Do they schedule an opponent like that as a reminder? All right, you think you're pretty good, but this is a bigger school and they're also really good. And a reminder that there is work to be done to get the ultimate goal of winning a state championship. I agree. It was good scheduling, John. Tough lesson to learn. Sometimes you just have to take your medicine and get better. The only two losses to Country Day, as Tim mentioned, and also to Class A Southfield, a team that made it to the state semis the last two years. And I think this team will put their game on the line against almost anybody right now. Little Lindsay kicks it to Toma for three. Scramble for the basketball. Dewberry comes away with it. The leader goes. Sixty-two to twenty-seven. And it's not just been offense; it's been defense as well. Navasny up top. Under a minute to play in the third quarter. Ben Ferry is fouled, and he'll shoot two. Ben Ferry, a fascinating story. Foreign exchange student from Germany who found his way to the tiny community that is Climax Scott's High School. He's only 16, but he's a senior academically. Most seniors in high school are 18 years of age, so he, he really is a talented ball player. Hey, MHSA.TV, what a live streaming coverage of the post-game press conference from this contest. Plus, you'll find an archive of 
All of this weekend's championship games get bonus coverage of the basketball finals at MHSAA.tv. Steve uh, Critchlow, the coach at Climax Scotts, was hoping that he might be able to keep Ben around for another year, but alas, that is not the case. And still ahead home to Germany. England. Offensive foul. Yeah, I, I think that Josh Baker, who's done a classy thing, as you see the nice charge taken. Not really sure about that one, but by going to some of his subs, John, remember, in high school basketball, if you get a 40-point differential, it turns into a running clock. And, and what, what Coach Baker is going to do is he's going to keep using this as an opportunity to reward his support guys that have done such a great job in practice, giving them some minutes. Ben Cookenham has entered the game, along with Cameron Garner. Even in the freshman, Toma's still out there. Dewberry's still out there. That's how has been taken away by Cookenham. Held ball. And the Panthers will keep it. But Cookingham looks like a really good defender. Nice stance, defensive fundamentals. Like his coach says, Ben Cookingham has a very high basketball IQ. And he says, we'll see him coach on television someday. There he is. Wearing the mouthpiece, sort of. Half in, half out. Final seconds in the third quarter. Perry can't get the layup to go. Toma looking to run. Through traffic. Took it in. Tapped up and in. Carter with a hoop. Final seconds at the buzzer. A little happiness for Zach Nabosny who gets a bucket to go. And we have reached the end of three quarters of play in the Class D Championship game. We'll get you right back to the Breslin Center. high school basketball coach both his father and grandfather were coaches at Bellevue High and Steve has actually continued a tradition with his team that his grandfather started more than 40 years ago if the team wins the tradition is that they have a winning streak of four games he'll do a pancake breakfast his dad and him now still do the pancake breakfast he says he owes the guys like three or four they're just rolling it over to next year because it had such a great season and I'm sure even after tonight they're gonna have another pancake breakfast coming guys we'll send it back to you all right, Shannon, thank you. Climax Scotts trying to, try to take in the moment, I think. Bask in it a little bit, play some basketball, have some fun. After listening to Shannon's story, I'm, I'm getting I'm hungry, John. <laughs> and there is Kurt Gibson. We're with us at the, at the top of the show. We mentioned that he claims he was mentioned for the, or named for the former Tiger outfielder. Lefty wears his number proudly. Absolutely. Wonder how the hamstrings are. <laughs> Is it funny that all the work that Kirk Gibson has done? I always remember his hurt hamstring yeah, in the home run. Right. Well, that is accurate. He probably had great hamstrings his whole career. I don't remember that. I, I have a philosophy in basketball, whether it's high school, college, NBA, if you make 10 or more three-pointers, you win the game. <laughs> and Southfield Christian has 10 at the end of the third quarter. Wow. What, what an uh, exhibition they put on from deep. And they don't look like they're backing off much either. Hinga, three ball. Got it. Jake Hinga hits a three. Here comes some four-court pressure. Toma just shrugs it aside. Well, 
This is really the best part of the Southfield Christian offense is that they put the ball in a playmaker's hands. I don't know which one. They've yeah, got four guys yeah, that do it issue. so well. Right. And they put exceptional shooters in the corners. I don't know which ones because they all shoot. They've got four high-level scorers, ball handlers, distributors. They do it all. An extremely tough cover as a team. Got a glimpse of Lindsey Hutter, the fourth taking off his very, very blue sneakers. He's getting some attention on what looks to be an ankle. Panthers with a basketball. Baseline. Got it. But one thing I've noticed about Climax Scott, it seems like when they knock down shots, they defend better. They, they seem really really more energized and it happens a lot of times when you make a bucket you get a little bounce sure. of your step you start feeling a little swagger out there and that was a pretty nice run by climax it was nine nothing that's where you see guys slap the floor and say come on right after they make a, a bucket defensively they're looking for the next challenge toma big lindsey pops in got it basket by 12 Sabazi will pull it out. And the Eagles are not letting up. Here comes Toma. Looking for a mate. Double teamed and is fouled by Nabosni. And we've talked so much about Chris Dewberry because he's got 22 and, and the Hunters have been really good, but you just can't dismiss Gavin Toma and all the stuff he does. 13 points, and you know he's knocking down shots. Four rebounds, three assists. And maybe sometimes the guy that doesn't make the athletic plays, the home run type plays, gets overshadowed. That's not the case with Toma. Out of bounds, back to Southfield Christian. I find it interesting that the two big guys, um, Climax Scott, are both on the bench, Satterley and Cook. A pretty nice crowd here for early in the morning. Filling right up. Class C championship game to come. You know, student sections are, are so fantastic. Did they have student sections back when you were playing? Dewberry hits. Yeah, we did. We did have them from a, a Class B school. Just barely over and back. But to Bishop Foley, played, played a little basketball, and we did not have much team success. Shocking. I couldn't shoot, but I couldn't jump well either. <laughs> and not much defense. I was consistent. I had some, I had some defense to my game. Toma. Hit of the paint. Running one-hander won't go. And the Eagles will keep it. Well, what a shooting exhibition we've seen from Southfield Christian. One three away from a finals record. And there's still 542 to go. I think that record might get blown away in this contest. I like their chances. Maybe right here. Yes. Dewberry just tied it. Right on cue. He heard us talking. Hinga for three. Front iron, no. Esheis for three, got it. Brandon Esheis hits. Down court. Back on the Panthers. Hinga backs up to take a three ball. And Hinga can't save it out of bounds. His range is incredible. I think that he got fouled on the play, a hand on the elbow. They run for threes. Bakari Evelyn, coast to coast. Rebound to Holacek. No. Dubera is fouled. And we want to welcome everybody to the Breslin Center and the Chris Dubery Show on his 18th birthday. 
the student section sang a rendition of Happy Birthday to Chris before the game. And it wasn't bad. That way they sounded really it wasn't bad. bad. Well, you had a chance to, to chat with him. And what's the best part of your day, you said? Well, he announced to us, it's my birthday. Yeah, I've known Chris for a long time, and you can you can look at a kid like this and say, oh, he's blessed with skill. Yeah, he's got some skill, but John, he's a worker to the highest level. He wears out basketballs in the summer. And his coach, Josh Baker, sitting with Lindsey Hunter, former Piston, former Laker NBA champion. Set at Romulus where he was an assistant coach, was surrounded by some really good players, Ronald Coleman and Jared Smith, who went on to Michigan, Will Clyburn at Iowa State. Over his years there, 36 players from Romulus went on to full rise. He said that Chris Dewberry is by far the best shooter he's ever been around. And while Chris Dewberry has great basketball skills, he aspires to be a pediatrician. I think he'll be the best shooting pediatrician <laughs> in the history of the field. He can make diagnoses from way outside the waiting room. <laughs> Four and a half to play in the Class D championship game, an outcome that has been decided for a while, but Climax Scott's looking to finish strong. Gibson's try for the three ball won't go. There's Big Lindsey. Lindsay the third. Toma into traffic. Stolen away by Esheis. Zach Nabosny pops. Try for a three. Won't go. Gibson. Hinga. Short. Well, they're getting looks. They're getting chances. They just can't get shots to fall. And Lindsey Hunter, or Evelyn, checked that. Couldn't get that one to go either. The Bosnia will kick it out. Yeah, if you're tuning in late and if you're wondering why Malachi Satterl and Aaron Cook are not in the game, the two six seven stars for Climax Scott's, the reason's simple. They weren't able to get the ball and score in size inside and their size was a detriment trying to deal with the three-point shooting of Southfield Christian. Chris Dewberry leading Southfield Christian in the direction of a Class D championship. It would be the Eagles first in school history. This year has been incredible. Uh, my other years here have been pretty bad because I've suffered injuries my sophomore year and junior year. And then this year we had Dewberry transfer last year, Big Lynn. And so I knew that this year would be really special and that we could really do work. And work they have done, led by his running mates, Chris Dewberry and Lindsey Hutter III. And that triad has been a big part of Southfield Christian rolling over Climax Scotts in the Class D championship game today. 12 out of 25. Maybe the best three-point shooting performance we've ever seen in the finals. They've tied the record, and they have shot better from three than they have from two. Yeah, pretty incredible when you look at their numbers. They've got 12 triples. Wow. And we'll keep track of this for the final three and a half minutes. Whether Southfield Christian can set a state record for the most threes in state history in a championship game. Here comes Dewberry. Big Lindsay. Lindsay the third. With five subs at the scorer's table, you can say goodbye with the championship to to three amazing seniors that have driven their team to a state championship. The first double in Southfield Christian High School history. And they'll receive the accolades from the student section and their classmates.
What a performance. You know, I, Steve Critchlow is going to walk away from this contest, and he's going to be evaluating what he could have done better, what drills his team could have done to prepare for this. I, I want to tell the coach that he has done a remarkable job with his team. And to put it simply, Southfield Christian has a higher level of offensive player. That's as simple as I can put it. They've got four guys on the court at all time that can knock down threes, dribble, pass, get to the rim, complete offensive players. Both of these teams have done a tremendous job of maximizing their performance. So a big hug from Lindsey Hutter the second to Lindsey Hutter the third, dad to son on the Eagles bench. Keep in mind the Climax Scots will have their two big guys back next year to make another run. Satterley and Cook both back for another season. Very well said, and, and this is the, the game. They will watch this tape, and they will start forward thinking about what do we need to do better next summer to start prepping, to, to work a little bit more on our post entry, to be able to finish a little bit stronger, to contest the three-point line more aggressively. Those are lessons that can power them to get back here next year. And as you begin the process of building a program, remember that it's only the first time the Climax Scots has played for a championship game. These practices and these experiences, these are building blocks, aren't they? And remember, this is the first time that either one of these coaches has ever been a high school coach. They're both first year. Alex Saltzman has entered the game for the Panthers. Jeremy Lantis in for Climax Scots as well, along with Hinga. And Ferry still out there. And Brandon Esheitz, who has the basketball now. Two and a half to play. These are some guys off the bench who probably never thought that they would be needed in a state championship game, hoping that it was going to go better for the starters than it has. And an extra step taken there by Cameron Garner. The broadcast of this game is a copyrighted presentation of the Michigan High School Athletic Association and Fox Sports Detroit. No reproduction, retransmission, or other distribution of the images, descriptions, or accounts of this game may take place without express written consent. We're with you all day. The Class C Championship to come on Fox Sports Detroit. Lantis, as Heiss, Brandon will try it off the back iron. There's a three ball. Foul inside. And the foul is on Southfield Christian, so free throws will be the result. The next edition of the MHSAA Super Show presents highlights from state finals competition in many of the other sports which crown champions during the winter season. Enjoy a look at the tremendous team and individual accomplishments on the MHSAA Winter Super Show, premiering Saturday, April 7th at 7 on Fox Sports Detroit. Ben Ferry with one of two. Rebounded by Hinga. Jake is done playing. Travel call on Christian Bangston who has entered the game for the Eagles. Many times the fans focus so hard on the starters, but it's easy to ignore the fact that the reason the starters are so proficient and strong is that they get a good run in practice every day. I would imagine there, there are some games that both of these teams overpower their opponent and realize their best competition that week was in practice on the practice court. Yeah. And again, that's all part of building a, building a program. More subs coming into the game. Brandon Ensheis, the senior starting point guard, as his day ended. Weston Williams in. Garrett Bartholomew. Cody Moody will try a three. And here come the Eagles. 
Rebound. Up and in. No. And it's not pretty at game's end. When the game is as lopsided as this one is. And this is interesting. Climax Scott's putting some of their more regulars in. Lindsey Hunter of Pistons fame. When he's in town, works with the guards, a very active assistant coach. And also, at 7.30 every morning, he meets with his players, and they shoot 100 threes and 50 free throws. And you can see by the fact that they have tied a state finals record with 12 in this contest. 36 points beyond the arc is just a, a fantastic feat. You know that he's taught them some defense, too, because that was always the best thing that Lindsey Hunter did in the Piston uniform. It's great to see him still around in the community and obviously involved in his kids' lives. And he's a big part of the dramatic turnabout in the basketball fortunes at Southfield Christian. Along with Josh Baker, they were 1-19 two years ago, and now they're going to win a state championship. Southfield Christian has scored over 90 points in a game six times. Very good friends with Nate Oates, the, the, the coach at Romulus. They play together at Moran, Moranpa Baptist in Wisconsin, and they talked about their dream of one day being a coach and winning a high school state championship. Very can't get it. And Ben will shoot a couple of free throws. There's Josh Baker. Ben Ferry came over from Germany and also played football. Not just a, a basketball experience. Said his best moment of his high school career was winning a dance-off <laughs> amidst classmates and teammates. He's cooking him. Floater. Rebound inside. Up and in, no. Cookenham comes out of the mess with the basketball. Free ball. And a foul. And will shoot three free throws. And by we, I mean Perry Bender will shoot three free throws. Six foot sophomore. Also a baseball player is Perry. Wants to be a professional in that regard. The biggest story in this game from my standpoint is the threes. That's obvious, but the secondary is that in the semis against Muskegon Catholic Central, Jason Rebecki had 37, and the Eagles were just too small to deal with him, especially on the glass. In this contest, not the case. Southfield Christian did an exemplary job of boxing out and getting four to five players rebounding in the paint. Big smiles on the Eagles bench. Bender hits two of three. Final ticks in what has been a rather lopsided Class D championship game. Battling to the bitter end. Cookingham plays close to the floor, if you know what I'm saying. Hinga at the buzzer. Got it. Southfield Christian, your Class D chance. Kind of knew how this one was going to go in the early going. The Southfield Christian began to establish dominance and just kept it up for the entirety of the Class D title game. Prolific. The best three-point shooting that we have seen. 12 triples, 36 back in the arc. What an offensive juggernaut Southfield Christian is, led by Chris Dewberry. They never trailed in the game, and they ended up winning it big. And they're about to get the bigger of the big wooden mittens 
to take home with them to Southfield. We'll continue in a moment from the Fresen Center and here on Fox Sports Detroit. The MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals are brought to you by Art Fan Furniture, Michigan's number one furniture and mattress retailer. Welcome back to the party that is the Breslin Center, at least at one end of the Breslin Center, as Southfield Christian finishes a basketball year in which they went 24 and 2. And their 24th win was big, and their three seniors led them to it. Coach Josh Baker said that. His trio is the best threesome in Class D basketball. They had 61 in the semis, put on a show here in the finals. Congratulations. Chris Dewberry, the birthday young man, had a 30-point day, along with Lindsey Hutter III and Gavin Toma. They led Southfield Christian to a big lead early and a big win late. And what is it's 76 to 44, their first ever state championship in basketball. For Tim McCormick and Shannon Hogan, I'm John Keating with our final score in the Class D title game, Southfield Christian 76, Climax Scots 44. You've been watching the MHSAA basketball finals on Fox Sports Detroit. So long from the Breslin Center in East Lansing.